So why is it agency comes of age? Over the 10, last 60,000 years, we revolutionized every technical aspect of what it means to be human. But there's one specific innovation that has gone missing over all of these like, history of human development, which is how we make decisions and organize in a giant scale. So for many years in my activism, I felt that there has never been a revolution. We had 1%, 15%, and the rest, the groups of people changed, but the structure never changed. And DAOs contain a small promise of change in this organization, and this is what I want to talk to you about today. So what, it, what does it mean to have a DAO for a boss? Right, I'm an immigrant, in case you didn't notice, and it's kind of hard to be an immigrant anywhere in any circumstance, not because of only racism or prejudice, but just because it's hard in general to not understand the symbols and the signals around you. After trying a lot to break into the digital, like social innovation and facilitation, coaching, etc., in Berlin, I found Genesis Alpha. Genesis Alpha is DAO Stack's first DAO where you can actually go now live and make a proposal for, hey, I want to get this much money to get this done. And if people agree that you should be the person to do it and agree with how much you charged, you're going to get that money, right? That's pretty much how we helped put this meetup together and how I paid my life for about four months before I got hired by DAOSTEC, right? So this is a reality. This is not a theoretical possibility anymore. The DAO, which was a collective fund, is very different from the DAOs we have operating today. And I'm the living proof that it's like not bullshit. If you, have, if you join an ecosystem, you find a problem you know how to solve, and you say, hey, I want to solve this problem, you're going to get paid for it. And this is already a giant revolution on how we see and do working rela work relationships in general. Um, I've made money to do videos for DAOSTEC. I've made money to make a portrait of Vitalik that we raffled online. Um, I've made money to do the framework that we now use to make DAOs, the DAO Canvas. I've, make money, I've made money to run workshops and to run workshops with Daniel that now works for Aragon. So the way that we relate and interrelate is changing rapidly because of this technology, right? So just in case you've never seen the operation of Alchemy, this is just, just to make sure that you know how it looks like and that you can go there. So if you go to alchemy.daostack.io, this is what you're going to see when you try to write your first proposal. So proposals are the basis of every movement. All the money you're going to make, all the reputation you're going to get, all the, everything that gets built starts with somebody saying, hey, Here's my proposal. So writing proposals is a skill set we're going to have to build. Right? This is how it looks. Proposals accumulate. Proposals are born here. And they are never going to pass, probably. They need 51% of votes to pass. Does anybody know what Gen is? Raise your hands. because I'm So Gen is the native token of DAOSTEC that we use to make predictions. It's a prediction market. Everybody knows what a prediction market is? Cool. So the way what we call holographic consensus in a very crude explanation is the interaction of a voting mechanism with a prediction mechanism. The voting mechanism, we use our reputation. So me, Felipe, my wallet has a certain reputation that I cannot send to anyone. It's bound to that wallet that's bound to me. And if I try to sell that wallet or in people notice, it's easy peasy for the doubt to slash my reputation. Right? So that's how I make decisions. I vote on things. And only people with reputation can vote. But what the signs for proposal makes their way all the way up here is if people stake gen. And the cool thing about the DAO stack protocol, which I think is the most special thing that we call holographic consensus, so if you know what's going on, you know that's a good thing that should be done, you can take part even if you don't have any reputation of the DAO. Does this make a little bit clearer how the DAO works? Does, had anybody like never seen this before, had no idea? Raise your hands. Everybody had seen this before? No. Okay, cool. So make sure you put it in your like notebook or something, alchemy.daostack.io. It's open there. There's about nine DAOs live. A little bit less practical. Let's try to understand what is a DAO. What the f is a DAO, right? Um, everybody knows DAO, Decentralized Autonomous Organizations. Do you guys think that's a good name or a bad name? Bad name? Give me hands for bad name. Give me hands for good name. All right, I, I don't like that name. Um, I think it's a, at least an imprecise name, or it's at least a name that we should think about, or at least it's worthy of a guy trying to make you realize why it could be interpreted as a bad name, and that's what I'm going to do now. 
So this is a tentative breakdown with a few grains of salt of DAO, right? Let's start with D, D for debate, right? Because is decentralization, true decentralization, absolute decentralization even possible? Do we have a decentralized system running right now anywhere? No, we don't, right? Because no system stands alone. So even if you manage to create a certain nudge in sort of corner, a sort of nook and a cranny of decentralization, there is a systems within systems within systems, right? So decentralized, mm, sure. What about autonomous? Is, is anything truly absolutely autonomous? Is that even possible? Or does it actually mean automated? Because in the original proposal, it meant automated. And it wasn't that big. It was just that we have smart contracts and self-actuating decisions, right? But then people like me, the sharing economy, annoying people with political science bullshit, comes and put a lot of ideology into it, you know? So even automated or autonomous, none of them are likely to be 100% true. Do you follow me? Does it make sense? Right, so uh, automated is complicated. Organization should stand, right? Organization, we know what our organization is. I'm not so sure, actually. I'm really not so sure because it's organizations within organizations within organizations where you don't really know where the edge is, creating organisms and stuff like Even our notion of an organizational boundary, where one thing starts and where the other one ends, and my belonging to an organization is at stake in this change, in this paradigm shift. And this is, I feel, the best part of my job is to see people realize this, that DAOs are not just companies on the blockchain, right? Um, it can be, but they're not just. It's a new kind of fire that we're stealing from the gods. It's the innovation that has been gone missing for 60,000 years. It's the potential of people truly making decisions together in a way that they're legitimate, accountable, shareable, reproducible, forkable. It's fucking amazing. We're going to hear from Peter later about MetaCartel. I'm not going to spoil it. Um, so we've entered officially the age of participation. We're talking about the participant, uh, like contributor experience instead of user experience, right? So instead of UX, we're talking about CX because we are building together whatever the fuck we are users off. So it's open source and steroids and we can actually get paid and you can actually get um, how do you call it, uh, credit, and we have Pundo, we have several people trying to do the decentralized Git, um, it's everywhere. So an update is required, like there's something that has to change in the way we see things in our heads, in the way that we understand what it means to be a person, we've been with other people acting inside groups, acting in a protocol, acting in a society, right? And the thing is, any percent, even though I shat on decentralization, I shat on autonomy or automation, and I shat on organizations, I do believe that any percentage in the direction of decentralization that we gain, any percentage that we gain in the direction of automation or autonomy, and any percentage that we gain in the direction of organisms instead of organizations, is a fucking revolution of Promethean scale. Everybody knows the myth of Prometheus, right? The fire stolen from the gods and given to the people. He's the father of humanity. Before Prometheus, we we're barely just animals. So, guess what? Prometheus hasn't happened yet. We are the fucking Prometheus swarm, right? So that's the message I have to say, because we are juggling jurisdictions and entangling systems. And so this yellow cut is what we see. But we have a four-dimensional phenomena developing over time that is a strange attractor. That's actually a 3D representation of a chaotic system. It's a pretty cool way to see it. And it's very much, we are all blind touching an elephant. And some of us touch the husk and we say, it's cold and it's smooth. And some of us touch the tail and say, it's furry and spiky. And some of us touch the ear and goes like, ooh, it's wobbly and smooth. But we're all describing the same thing. The phenomena is unseen. The wholeness of the phenomena remains unseen. Right? I'm not, I should just say Libra and like walk off stage or something. <laughs> so the future is partly shackled or in hiding because the whole of the phenomena remains unseen. So before you get angry at the Bitcoin maximalist next to you, just chill. We're all just like trying to understand the elephant. It's all good, you know? And once we do, once we do 
break all of these tiny walls and we are allowing smart contracts to talk to dumb contracts and the jurisdictions learn how to talk to each other because of the beautiful work of people like these two or us or him or all of us all the tiny walls that we're all obsessively trying to put down then there will be use cases ablaze and one by one these walls will fall and all i want to say is let's work on the update right the challenge that we have now is a challenge of vision and imagination. That's what I feel. It's to re-understand what families are in a decentralized world, understand what companies are. And some people are way ahead living this life, and some people are just like, no, man, I'm just trying to see what's going to moon. I'm just trading here. Shut up, you know? Just trying to have a couple of kids. I don't know, you know? But we need to have these conversations that are a bit more pervasive. They're technical, but not only technology technical. They're consciousness technical. They are love technical. They are um, team building technical. You know, these are hard conversations because dealing with exponential possibilities while trapped inside a linear brain is taxing. It's not easy. So we want to know, like, who's going to be ready when critical mass hits? And it might be faster than we think because I really feel that today is to the year 2000 and we're trying to talk about smartphones. That's the feeling I have right now. Right? It's the year 2000, and we're, we're already like, we're the, the small group of people that are trying to talk about smartphones. So the update, for me, has these four levels. And that's the project that turned me from a pollinator, from a random dude in the DAO proposing stuff, to part of DAO Stack staff. It's this book, you guys can go, daostack.io slash ebook, and download it for free. And it's separated in four chapters. These four chapters deal with the society level update, with the protocol level update, with the group level update, and the personal level update, divided in four chapters that I really like. I've made a little poem. They're the name of the chapters. It's agency comes of age. No, under the wide sky, agency comes of age, feathered together by doers and deeds. Right? It's people like us doing stuff. It be becomes this crazy super organism. That's what we're seeing. And we're collecting aha moments. We're living our lives, going about having experiences, living our little professional, our experiences, affairs, love experiences, friendship experiences, all these experiences together in this baggage of decentralized, decentralized life that is probably for all of us not more than five years old, which is like nothing, right? And we're collecting these aha moments. So I urge you guys to seek these experiences and go to uncomfortable situations because articles are great, the book is going to really like open up a bunch of doors, Especially if you like get your favorite article and look at all the references and go after the references because each of those people in that book are a master in a certain direction. It's fantastic. It was an incredible privilege to go like research all these people, annoy them until they, <laughs> they wrote for the book. It was the best thing I've ever done. And I like I dearly recommend the book. But articles are not enough at all. Right? So I urge you guys to go and join Genesis enough that you experience holographic consensus so you can understand and explain it. You don't have to become a DAOSTEC fan. You don't even have to like DAOSTEC. You don't even have to like do anything. I just want you to understand holographic consensus. It's like a, a homework sort of a thing, right? Because that's the vision that we have for a DAOSTEC DAOS. They should be hyper -scala scalable, resilient, and relevant. Right? It's not the same as some of the other DAO groups or companies that have out there. We have sort of a creative limitation. We want to be able to put 500,000 people in the same governance process and have that governance process make good decisions. That is a pretty big challenge. That is the innovation that has gone missing. Right? And our bet to do that is holographic consensus. Right? So the protocol and the interface are optimized to support decision making using less attention, not more. Because if you have 500,000 people proposing, who's the motherfucker who's going to read all the proposals? No one, ever. So subgroups of the big group need to be able to make big decision, decisions that are good for the group as a whole. That's all that DAOSTEC is about. And I recommend you guys to go to try to understand it because I would need a larger presentation and it still wouldn't work. You need to feel it. 
you need to see it. You need to see a contended, quiet ending at an ATF proposal and like really see how it went down. Like he's laughing here, haha. <laughs> it was an exciting like football match between all the pollinators against the Dowstack team. It was great. It was super beautiful to watch. Um, and for us, or for the team, or for me, seeding an ecosystem is bigger than starting a DAP or starting a protocol. It's about truly a group of people in interaction, pollinating and cross-pollinating. Now we have about nine DAOs, five of them I'm going to deeply, quickly talk about. And you can launch your own, your own DAO tomorrow, right? So the bet is that this is going to bring about rampant collective intelligence, and it's already happening. The number, of, the, the amount of things that have happened since the launch of Genesis Alpha, it's a bit numbling. It's a bit too much. And even like I work, I get paid to pay attention to what's happening, and I can't. It's too much. So we specialize, you, you choose a topic that you like, you follow that closer, you choose your friends, you work with those people. And this is only 300 people. It's going to grow way beyond this. And it's going to grow way beyond this next month with the next two DAOs that are going to launch. Four minutes, five minutes, one second. I'm almost at the end. Two more slides. All right. So first thing you should consider doing is join your first DAO. I recommend joining Genesis. I'll take a picture if you want to read this later because I don't have time to read it all. This is actually the next four slides of the picture slides with like links and names and things like this. Um, these are five very interesting DAOs. Genesis, you kind of know. ProcDAO is the first DAO to control, or the first DAO stack DAO to control physical space. So if you like Prague, pay attention to ProcDAO. There's a giant 2,000 square meter space that it controls, and it's going to make the decisions who stays there, et cetera, et cetera. So it's really cool. Um, does anybody know DXDAO? She's going to talk about DXDAO. PokaDAO is for Polkadot. And EFXDAO is a grants DAO from the eFenix guys. It's a small grants DAO for holders of Nectar. Um, so how do you launch a DAO? I bet there's at least a subset of the people in this room, like 5%, that are like, OK, how the fuck do I launch one of these? You need to have three things figured out. If you have these three things figured out, we will launch your DAO for free. Right? So what you, all you have to do is define the share mission. You have to have resources to be governed. So there's got to be something you're going to govern. And at least some amount of funds, right? And you have to have the defined initiator group. If you have these things, feel free to be in touch. Get my email, because I will come and annoy you. I'll set up a call between you and the business development team. This is the framework that I invented still as a pollinator before being hired of how to design your own DAO. It took six months for the team to realize what I had invented. And then, only the last month, I think it was used in more than five continents or something. It was ridiculous. Right? So when, when things accelerate, they accelerate. So even if you think this sounds really dumb or like a long shot now, I would, I would hedge and at least give this ecosystem of DAOs, all these people that are going to talk today, 8% of your mind share, at least. Right? And if you want to take a DAO trip, come to Berlin, 20th of August. Just send me a, go to this link, daofast.io. It's a conference. It's also my current project right now. And we're going to update everybody on all things DAO, um, 150 people. So if you want to come, RSVP or volunteer, we need some help. Thank you.